fingerprinting has helped exonerate more than 200 people post-conviction. DNA fingerprinting is a very reliable source because with the exception of identical twins, no two people have the same DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA looks like a long twisted ladder and when it's tested it's put through five steps. The first step is isolation. The second step is the cutting, sizing, and sorting. The third step is the transfer of DNA to nylon. The fourth step is probing. And the fifth step is the final product of black bands that are unique to each individual. These steps are performed on two samples of DNA and then they are compared. If the black bands are identical, that means that the samples were taken from the same person. If they are different, the samples do not belong to the same individual. Sir Alec Jeffries, a United Kingdom professor at the University of Leicester, created the first DNA fingerprinting technique in 1984. This technique is called the Restriction of Fragment Link Polymorphism, or RFLP for short. DNA fingerprinting has made an impact on history by acting as evidence of forensic investigations reuniting families, and paving the way for new medical advancements. DNA fingerprinting can prove many things about an individual, whether it's things like their identity to whether or not they committed a crime. DNA fingerprinting can prove if a person is guilty. This is if the DNA samples from the suspect matches the samples from the crime scene. DNA fingerprinting can also prove an individual innocent. In a raping case, Edward Honecker was wrongfully convicted for a crime. Honecker was sentenced guilty, guilty. and his punishment was life in prison. After writing many letters, a nonprofit organization was able to look into the case and go over the evidence. They were able to prove Honecker innocent after re examining the hair found at the scene. Nonprofit organizations, with the help of DNA fingerprinting, prove the innocence of many people like Edward Honecker. DNA fingerprinting can also help identify body remains. Dr. William C. Rodriguez, a forensic anthropologist, talked to me about his job. Being one of the best in the world, Dr. Rodriguez is called to help identified human remains. He has worked on many famous cases. After practicing for 26 years in forensic sciences, Dr. Rodriguez has found DNA fingerprinting to be a very helpful and positive tool when identifying bodies. How often do you use DNA fingerprinting? Use it on a daily basis. Uh, there are uh, many cases that I have and because it is a fairly accurate science, uh, we use it uh, uh, basically uh, every day. The use of DNA has made my job uh, much easier because we're able to identify not only uh, human remains but we can identify small bits of remains and the accuracy we have today is far different than what we had 20 years ago or even uh, a few years ago. As you can see DNA fingerprinting is very helpful in identifying body remains. For example, in 1918, a family of nine was shot and doused in sulfuric acid. Then, in 1989, the bodies were found and the skeletons were reassembled. Experts from all over the world finally discovered that the skeletons were the remains of Ramona's royal family. Bodies intact or not can regain their identity with the help of DNA fingerprinting. Not only can bodies be identified, but also cold cases from past years have been reopened and solved with the proof that DNA fingerprinting provides. This situation happened to a 29-year-old cold case that was reopened in 2006. The DNA fingerprinting techniques weren't as helpful in this case as first being studied, but as techniques improved and still improve, they become more helpful and reliable. New detectives opened up the case of Lewis Hale's death from 1980. The murderer who stabbed her to death was unknown, until finally in 2006 the detectives of the Los Angeles Police Department were able to narrow down the suspect to Guadalupe Gonzalez, who is on the run and not in custody. With the advancements of DNA fingerprinting, cases more than 10 years old have been opened and solved on small amounts of DNA evidence. Families have been reunited through DNA fingerprinting. Samples can be taken from two people and compared to see if they are related or not. This is because two related people would have the same characteristics in their DNA. There are several methods of paternity testing that have been developed. Courts and medical staff rely on these methods. In an interview with Sir Alec Jeffries, he recalls the first case used with DNA fingerprinting as evidence. The case involved a young lad that was threatened with deportation from the United Kingdom. They took a DNA test and it proved that the boy was a full member of the UK family and the case was dropped.
According to the Gale article, DNA fingerprinting, in 1976, a military junta in a South American country killed over 9,000 people, and the orphan children were given to military couples. After the regime was overthrown in 1983, Las Abuelas, the grandmothers, were determined to bring these children to their biological families. Using DNA fingerprinting, they found the families of over 200 children. Without DNA fingerprinting, many children and orphans would never be able to meet and or live with their biological families or parents. In another case, a 73-year-old man was accused of keeping his daughter imprisoned in a basement dungeon and of being the father of her six surviving children. DNA fingerprinting revealed that the daughter and the children were indeed related to the man. This was proof that was needed to prove this man guilty of child abuse and several other charges. Families have been brought together, paternity disputes have been settled, and family's justice is being kept in balance all because of DNA fingerprinting. Genes of certain cancers and diseases can be found in the DNA of an individual when DNA tested. DNA testing is not effective to diagnose for less than 10% of all cancers. DNA testing is effective to diagnose for breast cancer and ovarian cancer because it can diagnose a mutated gene that could increase the chance for a woman to get ovarian or breast cancer. All that is needed to take a genetic test is a single small drop of blood, which is then set off to be studied. Mrs. Case, a breast cancer survivor, got this gene test performed to know if she would have the possibility of getting cancer again. I actually have a family history on my father's side. I believe you have to be either a cancer survivor or you have to have a strong family history, whether it be a sister or a mother. I can actually then decide with that knowledge to explore other possibilities of reducing my risk for more cancer. And as a survivor, I think it should be offered to everybody who has been diagnosed or who has a strong family history. If the results of a gene test show that a woman does have breast cancer in her gene, she has about a 60% to 80% chance of developing breast cancer. A woman carrying a mutation of BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene has a more likely chance of developing breast cancer. But if either of these genes are not found in a woman's genes, she still has about a 12% chance of developing breast cancer. Ovarian cancer is more rare than breast cancer. If ovarian cancer is found in a woman's genes, she has about a 40% chance of developing this cancer. But if it is not found, she would only have about a 1% to 2% chance. In a scientific journal called DNA Fingerprinting provides a patient-specific breast cancer marker. It sums up that when testing genes for cancer history, DNA fingerprinting is 100% accurate according to their experiments and studies. Also in the article, Do We Know What Causes Breast Cancer? It states, Women have already begun to benefit from advances in understanding the genetic basis of breast cancer. Genetic testing can identify some women who have inherited mutations in the BRCA1 or BRCA2 tumor suppressed genes. These women can take steps to reduce their risks of developing breast cancer at an earlier, more treatable stage. Showing that many women have been able to be diagnosed earlier when the cancer is easier to get rid of and cure. Many people have been helped and cured sooner because of DNA fingerprinting. If we fast forward from Sir Alec Jeffrey's RFLP technique, many more techniques have been developed, one of which allows a person to be identified by testing just a single hair. Henry Ehrlich developed such a technique in 1988. Carrie Mollis developed another technique called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR for short. DNA fingerprinting has brought up new advancements. One of the advancements is a database that helped solve many recently unsolved cases. This database is a large collection of DNA from criminals gathered into a computer. Databases help solve cold cases by linking together criminals to the crime. Also, a new technological advancement is touch DNA. Dr. Rodriguez talked to me about touch this. DNA, where we're able to actually get DNA from a person's fingerprint or surface they just touched. Between solving forensic cases, finding our loved ones, and possible answers about genetic diseases, DNA fingerprinting gives people closure and what they want most, answers. Your subtleties.